This is chapter four. In the last chapter, Anastasia went on a date, kind of, with Robert uh, from her class. And she kind of says that she hates him, but I think deep down she actually really likes him. And she doesn't know how to flirt, so the whole time she keeps getting embarrassed with things that she's saying. Chapter four. Run a comb through your hair, sport. The real estate lady will be here in half an hour. She's going to take us to look at a house. Daddy, I told you I don't want to go and look at houses. Casablanca is on TV this afternoon. I'm going to watch it over at Jenny's. You and mom go look at this house with the real estate lady. I'll take Sam with me to Jenny's if you want. Remember, Sam's her little brother. Nope, you and Sam are coming with us today. Your mom and I have already looked at seven houses. Her mother interrupted. I looked at five others without you, Myron. I've looked at 12 altogether. 12 then. And this sounds like one that we want you to see. And Sam too. Where is Sam? Anastasia groaned, ugh, and went to go look for her brother. She found him sitting on his bedroom floor, looking at a volume of War and Peace. Good grief, Sam. Don't tell me you can read now. Of course I can't read. I'm only two and a half years old. I'm looking for the pictures. Why doesn't this book have pictures? I don't know. Probably pictures hadn't been invented yet when it was written. Come on, Sam, let me change your diaper. We have to go look at a house. Boring, said Sam cheerfully. You're right, boring. Hey, listen, Sam, do you want to have a plot? Okay, well, you cry when you see the house, okay? Cry a whole lot and say you hate it. Say you're allergic to it. Say it makes your eyes hurt or something. Okay, said Sam cheerfully. He practiced a fake cry, a fake whimper. Yeah, that's pretty good, said Anastasia, as she changed his diaper and buttoned him into a clean sunsuit. Just keep doing that when you see the house. Maybe you can make real tears. The real estate lady had bleached hair and a gross car with push-button windows. Sam fooled with the button on his window and mashed his fingers and began to cry. Not yet, Sam, muttered Anastasia. Save it. I think you'll adore this house, said the real estate lady in a fake voice. Good neighbourhood too, wonderful schools. What grade did you say you were in, Anastasia? I'll be in seventh. Oh goodness, I thought you were older. Maybe because you're so tall for your age. Terrific. Did anybody ever tell how rude it is to mention somebody's flaws, the things about them, for Pete's sake? Was she going to mention her father's baldness next? No, she was going to talk about the roof and the furnace. Wonderful old slate roof. Needs no fixing or maintenance at all. Lasts forever. Wonderful brand new furnace just put in last year. Hardly uses any oil. Blah, 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 blah. Anastasia could hardly believe that her mother had been through this 12 times already. She tried to think of the most boring things she had ever done. Going to an organ, a piano concert at the Catholic Church with Jenny McCauley's family came to her mind. She had almost fallen asleep. She imagined doing it 12 times. No way. And this was just as boring, maybe even more so. Now the lady was babbling about the plumbing, the wonderful copper pipes, the woodwork, the wonderful woodwork, the interest rates, the wonderful interest rates. <clears throat> Anastasia's interest rate in this conversation was 0%. She leaned back on the gross plastic seat of the gross car and glazed through the window. The trees and lawn, the garden was nice. It was sure a lot greener than Cambridge. Look, Sam, she pointed and pointed. Some kids in bathing suits were running through a sprinkler in a yard. Sam looked. I would like that, he said thoughtfully. Yeah, because you like being wet, dummy, Anastasia said pointedly. Anastasia was beginning to feel very odd. At first she thought she was car sick. Then she realized what it was. It was because she liked seeing what she was seeing through the windows of the car. She liked the trees and the, and the, flower, and the garden with the flowers. She liked the idea of running through a sprinkler, even with dumb Sam. She liked that there were dogs and kids and bikes and kind of a nice smelling quiet out here, wherever they were. But to like those things meant moving, and she loved Cambridge in the apartment. So there was a war going on in her stomach. 
Well, kiddos, said the real estate lady in her Barbie doll voice as she turned a corner. Here we are. This is it. Sam, dutifully, burst into fake tears. I'm allergic to it, he wailed. Anastasia didn't even hear him. She was looking at the house, and her stomach felt as if she'd been kicked by someone wearing cowboy boots. Her mother had once told her it was painful to fall in love, and now she suddenly she knew what that meant. She had expected to feel it for the first time when she fell in love with a boy, for Pete's sake. But now she was feeling it, the pain in her stomach. Her heart was beating funny. Mantovani violin music in her ears, and aching behind her eyes as she tried not to cry, because she was falling in love with a house. It was because the house had a tower. And it happened to all of them as, it, as if it were a contagious disease, like COVID. The main symptoms were speechlessness and silly and stupid smiles and grins. The real estate lady didn't understand it. She thought something was wrong. She became confused when none of them said anything, and she began to apologize for the house. The study was lined from floor to ceiling on every wall, with bookcases everywhere. And it had a fireplace. Anastasia's father stood in the center of the study with a silly grin, a big smile, and said nothing. I know you wanted a study, said the real estate lady. Of course this room seems small, I know. But you could have all of these shelves taken and torn out. And that would open up the room quite a bit and make it larger and... Her voice drifted away in confusion because no one was listening to her. Anastasia could read her father's mind. In his mind, he was arranging all of his books, alphabetically, in the shelves. In his mind, he had a roaring fire in the fireplace. He was sitting in front of it, smoking his pipe, reading. They moved on to another room, a huge octagonal room stuck on the side of the house. It was all windows. They stood there silently with the same silly smiles and grins and Anastasia reading her mother's mind. Her mother was setting up easels in the room, things you do to paint on. She was doing huge paintings with sweeping brush strokes. She was hiring models to stand there in the brilliant light. She was doing sculpture murals. So her mom's imagining this room as her art room. The real estate lady began to talk very fast, trying to, to fix and mend the silence. Of course, in the Victorian era, when this house was built, they always had these strange rooms that they called solariums. Useless now. You could close it off to conserve heat. Or in fact, you could even have this room torn down. It does stick out rather awkwardly from the side of the house, I know. The yard would be bigger if you just had this room taken away. And, but no one was listening to her. She stopped talking mid-sentence, confused. And they moved on. Upstairs, they moved from one bedroom to another. Big bedrooms with fireplaces and huge closets for playing hide and seek. Their feet echoed in the empty rooms. The heavy, decisive steps of Dr. Krupnik's size 12 shoes, her father. The staccato taps of the real estate lady's high heels. The duet of Anastasia's sneakers and her mother's sandals. And behind them, the pad, pad, pad of Sam's little feet. Now, not even the real estate lady was saying much. She was embarrassed. She thought they hated the house. Half-heartedly, in a bathroom, she said, Um, new plumbing, wonderful copper pipes. But then she fell silent again and looked through her pocketbook for a cigarette. Finally, she opened a door on the second floor and gestured towards the narrow, curving staircase behind it. You could close this off, she said, and puffed nervously on her cigarette. <sniffs> Anastasia scuttled up the little staircase alone to the tower room and stood there looking out and down at the green lawns, the gardens, the huge trees, the curving street, and in the distance, the Charles River and the buildings of Cambridge and Boston. Her parents didn't come up the stairs. They had read her mind and knew that she wanted to be in the tower room alone. But after a moment, she could hear Sam's small feet climbing the stairs. He appeared in the room, looking puzzled and said, Do you want me to cry again? 
do you want to do the plan, the plot now? But Anastasia said no and took his hand. They went back downstairs just in time to hear her father tell the real estate lady that they would buy the house. The mystery, wrote Anastasia carefully, of why you sometimes hate the idea of something, but then you like the thing itself. Now that had possibilities for a book, she would have to refine and change the title a little because it seemed a bit a little bit complicated, but it had real possibilities. Below the title, she, after she reflected on the possibility, she wrote, Subtitle, or why you sometimes like the idea of something, but hate the thing itself. Moving and the new house seem to fall into the first category, which is hating the idea, but then liking it. And Robert Giannani seem to fall into the second. That's the end of chapter four. So basically... Anastasia and her brother and her parents go to see this house, this house here. And Anastasia the whole time is saying how much she doesn't want to move, how much she's going to hate it. And guess what? She arrives and she loves it. The end.